Hey guys, I'm going to do a video on prisons now. Um, it's going to be about 10 minutes this one because I want to cover everything you need to know on prisons in one video. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about all prisons, the disgusting, horrible places, a little bit about them. Then I'm going to talk about the prison reformers and the people who made changes. And then finally, what the new type of prisons were, and the separate system, the silent system, and pointless work. So to start off with, we'll talk about all prisons. Um, so... If you were put in prison before the 1820s, the chances are you would go into one of these horrible places. Now, the bloody code wasn't working, um, but the bloody code was still being used up until the 1820s, so transportation and execution were the main forms of punishment. Um, now, all prisons were mainly houses of correction or these old-fashioned places where vagabonds, prostitutes, you know, thieves and debtors would be thrown into. In 1777, 4,000 people were in jail, and 60% of them were in jail for debt. So that means that 2,400 people were in jail just for being in debt. And these are the type, types of people where the authorities really don't know what to do with them. Vagabonds, prostitutes, and debtors, you can't really execute them. Transportation would probably be an option, but just throwing them into a house of correction would probably be the best thing to do. Now, the old-fashioned prison system was really, really, really horrible, okay? Um, all prisoners would be housed together, so that it wouldn't matter if you were a child, a man, a woman, a hardened criminal who's, you know, a horrific, horrific people, basically, were all just thrown in together. Um, and lunatics were thrown in with, with women and children. It was really nasty. There was no care or um, thought put into how to house these criminals. They were all put in big cells together and just left to get on with it. Prison wardens were unpaid, so they had to make their money from selling things to the prisoners. So food would be the main thing that they would sell, probably tobacco. And then to the richer prisoners, they could sell wine, maybe a better cell, a bed, access to clean water, those kind of things. Things that people just didn't have. For, if you were poor, you relied on charity. Um, if people didn't come in and give you money or provide you with food, you just won't without. And for a lot of poor people, being sent to an old prison, being sent to a house of correction was a death sentence. The wealthiest could have access to their own room, maybe even with a fireplace. They could have a room with a window, food, wine, even access to prostitutes and women. Um, and for the poor, they were living in dirty, horrible, overcrowded conditions... For example, Newgate, which is an old prison, doesn't exist um, anymore, but in, it was in London, and 275 people were crammed into a space designed for 150. So you've got horrendous overcrowding, which led to a lot of diseases and illnesses. Um, prisoners had to pay to see a doctor, so if you were poor and you were ill, you just died. Um, something called jail fever uh, killed a lot of people. It was probably typhus or cholera or dysentery or one of these other horrific things that are you know, you catch if you live in really dirty, unhygienic conditions. So for the poor, it was essentially a death sentence. Um, now, what happened as the bloody code stopped becoming a viable way of dealing with people, with criminals, people turned more and more to the idea of prisons as not just a punishment, as a, de as a deterrent, but also as a way of maybe reforming. And this is where we come to our three reformers. So we've got Robert Peel, uh, John Howard and Elizabeth Fry. Now, we've talked a lot about Robert Peel. Um, and all you need to know really is that he came up with the Jails Act in 1823. Now, what um, Robert Peel believed, he believed that prisoners should be kept separate. So hardened criminals should not mix with new prisoners because he saw this as a way of basically teaching them how to commit crime. He thought male and female prisoners should be separate, separated from each other. And actually that when women prisons and female prisoners should have female um, wardens for obvious reasons. Um, he b was quite religious and believed that all people should attend chapel and have religious instruction in how to be a better person and a better Christian. Um, he thought that magistrates had the duty to visit prisons and keep an eye on them and make sure that they, were, um, they weren't these horrible, dirty, disgusting places where people were being taught how to commit crime. And he thought that prisoners should be treated with a little bit more respect, so they should be kept healthy, they should have fresh water, they should be fed, adequate drainage, um, prison wardens should be paid, governors should be paid running the prisons, um, and basically, you know, prison, prisoners should have a, a much better life. John Howard, who um, is important because he, uh, as a sheriff, went into prisons, uh, he wrote um, a report called The State of Prisons in England and Wales, which he published in 1777. And in his report, he highlighted all the same problems that uh, Robert Peel has just talked about. 
Um, he was the first person really out of our three to go into prisons and be and be horrified and, and try and do something about it. Um, he, highlighted, he highlighted the problems of the old prison system. He attacked the, the fees that prisoners had to pay and the fact that they had to buy, you know, pay for their own food and things like that. Um, and his proposals basically said they should have better accommodation, prisons should be healthier, um, and they should separate prisoners and give them a better diet. Elizabeth Fry, who was a Quaker, who was very religious, um, she believed that every single person could be made into a better person through God um, and that people could be reformed. She visited Newgate Prison um, and she was utterly horrified at what she saw. Um, she saw women with babies and children crammed into rooms, fighting with each other. She actually witnessed uh, two women fighting over a dead baby um, for its clothes, which would have a lasting effect on you. She highlighted the poor living conditions, um, the exploitation of the female prisoners by the male wardens, um, and she set up a, um, a, um, a prayer group of Quakers uh, to offer assistance and to go into prisons in Newgate, well, in particular Newgate, and um, give the women religious instruction, teach them how to be better Christians. She also set up a school for the children at Newgate um, and taught them like how to sew and knit so that when they could get out they could do a little job so they could earn some money rather than um, you know relying on crime. She had a big influence Elizabeth Fry on the 1823 Jails Act and John Howard and Elizabeth Fry their ideas really do inform Robert Peel's Jails Act. Um, these three people they might have some slight differences but they're really all saying the same thing that prisons need to be clean, they need to be, um, it needs to be a fairer system and you need to try and give people, um, treat people with the sort of um, respect and quality of life to help them to, to reform. Key to all three people is the importance of religion. So um, that's something where religion as a factor comes in. Um, that led to new prisons. So from 1823, you've got the Jails Act. Um, as a result of that, between 1842 and 1877, the government built 90 new prisons. Now, a perfect example of one of these new prisons is Pentonville. Okay. Now, the new style prison that you're familiar with is kind of what the, well, the, 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 these guys came up with. And it's this kind of thing. It's a prison with a central area here that can be watched by guards and then wings which come off like spokes. And the idea behind this is that you're giving prisoners a clean, hygienic place where they can be um, reformed but it's still, to an extent, a deterrent. Now, the key features of new prisons are the separate system and the silent system. Now, I'll talk about the separate system first. Um, prisoners should be kept alone and isolated in their cells. So, when you look at these type of prisons, each little window, that's my phone, my phone will zoom in, each little window is a cell. So, prisoners are in their own cell uh, so that they can't communicate with people and they can't share criminal ideas. Um, the idea of keeping people alone as well is to, is to allow them to reflect on their crime uh, and hopefully realise that they've committed terrible offences and they, they shouldn't do it ever again. Um, they would be given religious instruction to make them better Christians. The idea that the Bible and religion could make them better people was really important. Um, and essentially what this did is put criminals in solitary confinement. Now, the upshot of this is that it had a horrible effect on people's mental mental health. In the first eight years of Pentonville, 22 people went mad, 26 had nervous breakdowns, and they had three suicides. However, they saw this as being a system that worked. Okay, And part of the system would be to keep prisoners in a situation like this where they couldn't communicate with each other. So once they were taken out of their cells... They would have a hood put on them, so a mask put on them, so they can't see anyone. And the rope was there to guide them um, every four and a half meters, so that they could they knew that they couldn't communicate with other prisoners. Um, when they went to chapel and had religious instruction, um, they were kept separate. You can see that there are wooden um, wooden slats in the way, so they were being kept completely separate. Here's an example of a cell. You've got a single bed, and next to it, you've got um, a weaving loom for the prisoners to work on. So the idea is that prisoners can do hard work um, and this will make them into more productive citizens. So religion and hard work are the way that you're going to reform prisoners and keep them away from each other, which isn't a bad idea, except that 
you do it to the extreme, you cause problems. Now, the silent system um, was introduced a little bit later than the separate system. And the silent system was the government attempting to get even tougher. And this is because... Um, from the 1860s onwards, there's a few really high-profile um, uh, criminals and criminal acts. Um, and there's also this growing belief that crime is still on the increase. And this is partly due to newspapers um, and communication, but also these penny dreadfuls, which are like little cheap magazines you could buy, which would tell you about all these horrible, lurid, violent crimes. And also... People start thinking that actually you can identify people as criminals by the way they look, by the, the, fa the, the features of the face. And all of this leads to much tougher regimes, which is known as the silent system. And this is basically hard fare, which means that your food would be hard. It would, it would be the same thing every day, really monotonous and disgusting stuff. Porridge every day. It would be hard board, which means that you would sleep on hard bunks. You wouldn't have a nice hammock or, or something. And finally, hard labour which was deliberately hard and pointless work. Um, and together, they believed that this would make prisons into... Uh, this, would, this would create a prison that would reform people. Okay, now, the next video I'll do on prisons is going to be where we get changes in prisons um, and we stop the se separate system and the silent system. But that is the three characteristics of prisons that you need to know. So what all prisons were like, who reformed them and what they believed in, and then finally what the new prisons were like. Now, I should have done this at the beginning, but I'll quickly do it now. Factors, if you haven't worked them out, are your individuals. So Robert Peel, John Howard, Elizabeth Fry. The government as part of the people who are, who are changing prisons. People's attitudes and changes in attitudes towards the bloody code. And then finally, technology. The ability to create prisons, um, you know, build prisons that have cells, individual cells for, for criminals. And then the importance of religion. Um, especially for someone like Elizabeth Fry um, and prison reform, okay?